So during yesterday's class, we learned about imperialism in the broad sense, whereas today we focus specifically on imperialism in Africa. So if you missed class, I hope you can come away from this video understanding these three big ideas. Number one, the scramble for Africa. Number two, the Berlin Conference. And number three, the effects of European imperialism on Africa. But before we move forward, let's do a previously on yesterday's class. What is imperialism? Now, it's literal textbook definition none of you are struggling with. It's not a tough concept. Nations, they had these boats that could go all over the world, and a lot of military power would load up these boats with their military power, show up to a land that had lesser military power, and impose their will, colonize them or what have you. So some people in class say, well, it's bullying in a sense, and I get where you're coming from. It's a big, powerful nation taking advantage of a nation that's not as strong as them. And I don't think that's an unfair definition that I get from people in class. So what happened was the scramble for Africa, and this political cartoon summarizes it really well. So European nations starting in the 1870s all wanted to get a piece of Africa. And by 1890, most of Africa came under European control. So the Europeans swooped down to Africa and they did their thing in a very quick fashion. And you can look at all of these European nations. I want a piece. I want a piece. I don't know why the Italian guy looks like Mario. I don't get that. I'm offended. But anyway, I'm joking, by the way. I'm joking. But you can see the nature of this idea. European nations are saying, hey, I got to get my piece. And everybody's bum rushing Africa trying to get their piece. Now, a lot of you are saying, hey, it didn't belong to them. Why did they feel that they could do that? Right. Now you're looking with modern eyes, and I get that. But in the context of the time, Europeans saw Africa as ripe for the taking. Okay. And by 1890, only Ethiopia and Liberia remain. Now, we hypothesized in class why. I'll give you the answer here. Now, Ethiopia just flat out won. They fought and they won. Whereas Liberia um, was created by uh, former American slaves a few decades before so had the protection of America, so it was left alone. But you can see the rest of the continent, that's 94%, was taken over by European powers. And you can see it once again. And here's the heavy hitters, the British, the French. I mean, look at the red, 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 red. Look at the green. Lots of France. Uh, Germany, the Portuguese, the Italians, the Belgians, and the Spanish. So you can see this scramble for Africa. So who are the imperialist nations in Africa? What do they share in common? One, they're European, and two, they felt Africa was theirs for the taking and didn't have a lot of regard for the African people. I think that's more than safe to say. So anyway, now the French acquired much of northwestern Africa above the Sahara as well as Central Africa. And I keep reiterating the same points here with these maps just to show the scale of imperialism. It's really remarkable if you think about it. This enormous diverse continent and how Europe in the span of a couple of decades just gets hegemony over the continent. Okay, now these European nations, they, like, here's maybe not the greatest analogy, but you have six teachers. Some of your teachers are easier to work with than others. I don't think anybody likes sitting in a hard plastic chair and being told what to do and Adults telling you do this work, do that work. But let's be honest, some quote unquote, I don't call them rulers, but some authority figures are easier to be around than others. Now, I think the worst of the bunch were the Belgians in the Congo. And this image shows the cruelty and how barbaric European imperialism could be. So you can see some of these are small children. These are just kids and their hands are cut off. Because if they didn't supply enough rubber to the Belgians to make an example of them, they cut off their hands. Now, a lot of you logical people are saying, well, they can't get rubber anymore with one hand. Yeah, I get that. But it's just trying to scare others. And the fact that you could cut a child's hand off is a level of cruelty that boggles my mind. So anyway, this scramble for Africa was terrible for the Africans. They really, really struggled. Whereas the British were the most reasonable, I could argue, of these European powers. But again, nobody likes being told what to do, and certainly nobody likes some foreign power coming into your land and doing what they want to do in that land. So anyway, so the second big point was this Berlin Conference. And you can see 
a drawing here of it, and you can see these Europeans. And so they don't start wars with themselves and step on each other's toes. They decided to sit down and, and carve it up. So, hey, you take this and you take that. No, I want this. No, I want that. Okay, let's compromise this kind of thing. But again, on a philosophical level, all of these people thought of this continent as theirs for the taking with zero regards for the people. But this Berlin Conference reflects the minds of European imperialism at the time. Okay, let's gather around, let's take what we can get, and let's get rich off of our imperialist efforts. Okay, now the third part is what were the effects of imperialism in Africa? And let's be real clear on this. They are still being felt in modern times. Okay, this is not, granted it's history, but its impact and its effect is still being felt today. Okay, so one of the effects, and, I'll, and I'm, I'm reluctant to call them positive effects, but some things that came about with this imperialism was the rise of transportation, you know, trains and, and telegraphs and phones. Modern technology was brought to the colonies. Now, on an environmental level, it's pretty rough, but on a infrastructural level, that's what the Europeans brought. Now, they also brought European medicine and improved nutrition, and it led to an expansion of the population. Granted, there's more people, but it's not a great gig. You know, for example, if I'm getting rubber all day and giving it to my Belgian imperialist powers, it's not the best gig in the world. However, with that medicine, it, the population did go up. Now, the downside you know, clearly, I've already showed you people getting their hands cut off and the Germans committed what I consider a genocide of starving um, people in their colonies. And here's some photo evidence to how bad it was that the Germans would let people starve to death. There was tremendous, tremendous cruelty. This notion that these are inferior people can be done with them, whatever we, we see fit. Not a nice way to treat other human beings. We can all say that. Now, Europeans divided Africa and ignored historical, ethnic, and cultural boundaries. This is a little more of a difficult concept. So let me give you an analogy, hopefully you understand. Let's say in class, I know within the class there's certain people that don't get along. Now, I think I'd be a lousy teacher if I paired you up in projects together and had you sit next to each other. But I know full well, I've had this happen many, many times, where people come up to me and say, don't sit me next to such and such. I go, okay, you go sit in the far corner. And I'll put this person in the front corner, use a different pencil sharpener, do not come in contact. You have conflict with each other. The Europeans did not care. So, for example, these are the ethnic groups within Africa, and political lines were drawn regardless of who was there. So they were putting people, different people, in the same borders. Problems are going to happen. Now, when Europeans left, you can imagine, oh, we're leaving now. Play nice, get along. Well, it doesn't work like that, as you can, you know, as you can guess, okay? Now, the philosophical undercurrents that allowed all of this, okay? This notion of eugenics. So, eugenics is this idea that only the strong should survive, and they're equating people what you do with animals. So, I don't think it's anything off-putting if you say, well, I'm a dog breeder, and I want the uh, strongest two dogs to mate to make strong puppies. Okay, that's fine in the realm of biology, but Europeans at the time equated that with people, that, hey, Europeans are superior, and, um, you know, we should breed and the weak should not. And eugenics, this well-born, came from Francis Galton, this uh, genetic determinism, it was concerned about which uh, traits you could, um, you know, the traits that are spread through the human population. And this notion permeated imperialism the whole time okay so the primary sources speak for themselves and this you know went <laughs> you, you'll blow your mind how far this notion of eugenics went and you can see the in america these efforts to only have certain people breed and certain people should not and certain people should be sterilized so they don't have offspring the same thing you do with like a weak dog but these are people and this was acceptable in the european mind and the American mind for a long, long time. Yeah, it's kind of a sick feeling. And you can see people who should be sterilized. This is a chart. This is a medical chart. This is, these aren't an insult. And they had levels from moron, imbecile, to idiot. And these people should not reproduce. And if you look at this statistic, 
they sterilize people for being feeble-minded. In other words, lower IQs, epilep epileptics, that's a tough word to say, and people with mental illness. So this idea, this philosophy permeated imperialism, okay? And I, I mean, I showed you a bunch of stuff in class. Well, you were absent, you didn't see it, but you can see these charts that kept reinforcing the notion of European or white superiority, and it permeated pseudoscience, and it permeated legislation, and um, it was rationaliz rationalization and justification for imperialism. So just to wrap things up, there are six questions that I'm going to ask you to answer. They are all on Google Classroom, so if you are absent, please simply answer these six questions and turn them in. And just to make one last point, Africa as a continent got carved up by European powers to the tune of 94% of the continent. That's a lot. So you can make a strong argument of all of the areas of the world um, where imperial powers showed up. Safe to say that Africa got the short end of the stick. They had the most troubles from this. And the effects of this are still being seen in uh, chaotic governments and um, infighting in African nations. But really, if you trace it back, you can trace back these modern troubles to European imperialism. So anyway, thank you for watching.